Hi, I'm Rutuja Zoshi, a Sanskrit teacher from Kanaka International School. Hi, I'm Renoza Ansari. I'm the University and Career Counselor and a teacher from Kanaka International School. Hello, I'm Amida Wei. I'm teaching English to young kids at Kanaka International School. Hi, I'm Krina Chauhan. I'm a curriculum head for Kanaka International School. Hi, I'm Samantha. I'm studying in 9th standard in RBK Global School. Hi there, I am Adisha Divedi. I study in 9th standard in RBA Global School. Hi, I am Namya Singh and I am from class 7 of um, Kanakya International School. Hello, my name is Anjali Vassar. I am currently pursuing A-levels in Kanakya International School. Hi, my name is Navya Deshpande. I am from grade 9 from Kanakya International School. Hi, I am Kashish Baba from Kanakya International School. Hi, I am Tavisha Gupta from grade 9 from Aviki Kanakya. Hi, I am Pratha Pokhli from Kanakya International School. Hi, I am Vyom. I am in the 9th standard in, at, at Kanakya International School. Hello and welcome to Kanakya School's talk show, Master Talk. A series of talks comprising the Inspiration Talks, the Aspiration Talks and the Perspiration Talks. During this talk series, the students get to meet and listen to the best minds and successful individuals from various works of life who inspire them to dream big and to cultivate a growth mindset. Everyone admires the great work of uh, pro professionals and famous personalities, but nobody counts the enormous efforts and sacrifices that they made to achieve that feat. Nothing can happen unless you have a very strong desire to work for it, to achieve the otherwise thought impossible. In the Master Talk series, distinguished people and youth icons who have achieved the unthinkable share their life experiences to motivate the students to work harder to achieving their own dreams. Our previous talk left a lasting impression on our viewers and students. It lifted our confidence to ask questions and learn from the guests' answers. We are very excited to bring an insightful session to you all today. I would now like Anjali to introduce our guest for today. Our speaker today is a renowned spiritual artist, Sri Udharaj Ji. Welcome, sir. It is an honor to have you here with us today. Thank you. Born into a family steamed in artistic tradition from Mumbai, India. Despite lacking formal training, Mr. Gardner's talent flourished, fueled with his unwavering dedication and passion for self-expression. For more than 25 years, he's made over 2,000 paintings, each a testament to his profound philosophical insights and unwavering determination, determination to his craft. His artistic journey has taken him on a spiritual pilgrimage, delving into the Asian wisdom tradition of Hinduism, Buddhism, Sufism, and beyond. Through his art, he has invited everyone to embark on a journey of self-discovery, bridging the gap between the material and the metaphysical. Through his work, he has gained recognition both nationally and internationally, giving him titles such as the Prince of Indian Contemporary Art and the Sage of Indian Contemporary Art. Today, he continues to inspire us with his profound insights and spiritual vision. We we really appreciate you being here today and we are ready to ask you questions about your journey and learn from your experiences today. So let me quickly share with you of what I do, who I am, what's not on the internet. So, I was a student just like you. My name is Uday Raj Gadnis. I paint, I read, I write, I travel, I meditate. And I'm going to take you back to an age where I was just 11. And I was uh, at the St. Xavier's school, a convent school in those days, which were rare. Um, as you all know that I'm 58, so when I was just about an 11-year-old boy and I was in the school, I was uh, not interested in studies at all. It didn't bother me whether geography, in, you know, the geog in geography where the earth had five layers, so there was algebra, and, you know, I didn't really bother about E is equal to MC square and, you know, parabolas didn't bother me. I was like a fun, loving, uh, happy, healthy child. But I was just blessed and I was good in studies. So I didn't have to study, I didn't have to mug, I didn't have to really very work very hard. So I just saw something once, I liked it, I read it, I just went and wrote my exams 
and fortunately I stood first in the class. I was not good in drawing, hard to believe. I was not good in painting, I was not good in arts, I was very good in science. And I would really, really struggle to, you know, in that time, drawing and craft ki classes were done, and you had to draw and paint. And there was no luxury of watercolors, and there was no luxury. So you were given some ugly, dirty crayons. And I mean, I liked the smell of it. I could chew them sometimes, and watercolors, and were rare. So I had a wonderful school teacher who said, Oh, now that you're in the fifth standard, I'm going to give you drawing sheet papers and I'd like you to go home over the weekend and paint something and come the next day. So next Monday we were there and everybody had done their own thing and I said, look, you know, I'm not good in drawing. That's the only subject I'm getting, just my past class. I need to impress my teacher. So I went to, a, in our colony, we lived in a small little colony, I went to an artist who did spray painting, calendar painting, beautiful, he was a professional. I said, this is such a small piece. I was, uh, why don't you just do something nice? And he put spray paint and he made the painting so beautiful with watercolors and so amazing. Next day I went and everybody showed and they were like, oh, how beautiful. How I said, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm like get, talented and all. Of course, the teacher saw it and knew it and he could have given me two tight slaps and asked me to stand outside. In those days, you got slaps, you got caned, you were on your knees, you had to bend down outside the classrooms. None of these things happen today. He could have done that. I remember his name was teacher, Mirza Sir, we used to call him. He looked at it and he said, did you do it? Um, I said, yes. He said, are you sure? I didn't give you any watercolors. I just gave you some crayons. If you did it, then you should be able to do it again. So why don't you come in front of the class, here are the sum sheets, and do it with crayon and show how you could do it. I went up, uh, you know, there were about 50 students and I started crying, of course, you know, I had lied and I was and, and he said, okay, don't worry, there's nothing to worry. Um, you'll have to wait after school. Now, to wait after school was the end. I mean, like, you know, you're so bad, your parents would be called and so on and so forth. He said, don't worry. I missed my school bus. You went in school bus. You know, I came from a simple family. And um, he said, don't worry, I'll drop you home. And he said, sit by my side. And everybody's gone. You don't have to be conscious. Uh, why are you not doing it? He, you know, I was a smart kid. I said, oh, you gave me crayons. I needed watercolors. He was like, oh. He said, don't worry. I'll go quickly to the staff room. He got me, you know, those round watercolors with a dirty, ugly brush. And he said, okay, here are watercolors. Do it now. There's nobody else. I started crying. He said, don't worry. He took me on his lap and he said, it's not really important of what you paint. How you paint is important. How sincere you are with that medium is important. What you paint for who you paint and which medium you paint is irrelevant. How you're doing it and what is your connection with what you're doing is all that matters as an artist. I remember his words even today because I was one day, one time, your age, you're much older and much, much more wiser and much more sincere, but that remained in my heart and over a period of time after my education in bachelor's in psychology and master's in psychology and then master's in fine art and I'm having my painting exhibition, but something remained in my heart of that one teacher. Those words remained of how sincere you are. In those days, way back in the 70s, we had only two options. Doctor banna hai, engineer banna hai, accountant banna hai. There were no professions like choreography, fashion designer, hair doing, AI. Well, imagine, can you imagine a world that I came in from? I had no mobile. There was no internet. Can you believe there was no internet? There was no color television. There was no ATM. All that we had was comic books. We went to play. And in school time was over, in vacation we painted whatever was given to us. And that's how my journey is. That's not on the internet. This is what I share with students in 10 years time. Your average group is about 12, 15, 
Is that yours? So in 10 years time, you'll be 25 and you'll remember these words of an old man that you heard in an art gallery and it'll remain in your heart because whatever you do in life is irrelevant, is meaningless. How you're doing it is important. What it means to you is important. And success is the key. So here is a, a, a two-minute conversation. We come back in 2024. This is a series of paintings I painted in 180 days, 180 paintings. And this is about the spiritual dynamism of a very important temple literature called the Durga Saptashati. So please understand that just because it is in Sanskrit and just because it has the word Durga, it doesn't really truly belong only to the Hindu dharovar. It is for everybody because it has nothing to do with religion. It has something to do with spiritualism that is personal. You can be a Muslim, Christian, Jain, Hindu. You could be anything you want. You could be a Zen. You could not believe in any God but believe in yourself. What's important is the message. What's important is my feelings, not my words. So Durga Saptashati, in simple language, in a simple format, is about the victory of good over evil. There is no good outside and there is no evil outside. They are all within. There is no happiness outside because if you could find happiness, it would be a sellout. As young minds, when you look at a work of art, and you understand it in your own way and manner is important. You see what you want to see and feel, that is important. Because for me, the journey of painting this during the pandemic in 180 days when I was looking after and serving my parents was about my relationship with the divine. And what I saw in my meditative form I kind of painted it. I saw the green earth on which for the first time the feminine power which we call Shakti, the creativity. I mean all of us have come because we have stayed in our mother's womb for nine months. Nobody dropped from the sky. At least I don't know anybody who dropped from the sky. So you stayed in the womb for nine months like this hoping you will be delivered out. And that's what she says that I'm the Bhumi. However wealthy you are, Chandi ki roti to koi nahi chaba raha hai na? To bhoomi ki baat hai. So every work of art you see is connected with some kind of a spiritual philosophy which is unique and uniform in all dharmas. And you as young minds should be able to decode it. It is all coded. I am not going to put an English translation below it. I mean, you did really know how to use an app. It, was, it came naturally to you. You learned because you were interested in it. And most of us are interested in dating apps, regardless whether you're 60 or 60. The 16 to 60 age is irrelevant. Most interested you are in social media, which is very natural. And so were we, but we just didn't have the equipment. And this is a way of communication to a generation which will come ahead of time somewhere in the future, who will start decoding it. Maybe it's your generation. Maybe one of you will go to Mars. Maybe one of you would become what you want to. As an artist, when I look at the work and when I paint it, I'm saying something to the audience. I'm saying something through that work, which is saying that the goddess picks up the spear and she throws it at pride, ego, anger, and it rips even something as delicate as the lotus in two parts. But she does not forget the moon, which is a symbol of beauty. All of that is viewed like the third eye. Sometimes you're sitting and you want a friend of yours to connect and suddenly he or she calls. So you have a powerful intuitive understanding. We all have gods and goddesses or any, every house, at least in India, has a small place where you 
Why is it so? Why is it so important to us? Because your roots are important. Your roots as an artist are important. You can paint anything, you can draw a line like this and you call yourself. What it means to you, forget about the audience, forget about who is viewing, what somebody is saying, what somebody is criticizing, forget about it. You can't make everybody happy, starting your own family. So stop thinking as an artist that you're here to make someone happy or not. Paint, sing, write, dance, whatever you feel there is art in you, express it. You're in a very fortunate phase of your life you have a stable home, somebody's asked me a question, how was your childhood? Fantastic, beautiful, I had no pressure, I was fat and podgy, I ate chuda, chakli, jam, I, had, I was not body conscious, I was fair and roly-poly, I enjoyed life. I had lovely parents who gave me great food. Saal mein ek bar Diwali ka naya chola milta tha, saal mein ek bar Christmas ke time aapko cake milta tha, wafers was a luxury. It was a different world. Everything was happy and healthy. I had a brother, we lived together, I had lovely parents. No childhood is perfect, please understand that. No parents are perfect. So don't expect your father and mother to say, Kya lata ki tarah gari hai, ye to dipika hi hai, sundar hi hai, gunwan hai. Are ye to nasa jayegi. They are not, they are not. They, you came in their life after they were married or together, so, unki script ban chuki thi. You've come only in interval. Interval ke baad aap wapam leke unke life mein aage. They had a life before that. So, no childhood is perfect because no parents are perfect. And you will never understand that before and until you become or at the becoming of a parent. So, please, you know, stop finding excuses and faults and reduce your expectations from your parents who are struggling anyway. So, I'm your grandfather's age, I'm 60, so you know, your parents must be 35, 40, so I'm like a real grandfather age. Get on with your creativity. Get on with exploring your creativity, it's a gift. You definitely have it in you. You must be a writer, a painter, a dancer, a poet, a musician. Anything to do with art, don't leave that. Even if you're a mathematician or a scientist, if you're artistic, you will find a way of innovation. The world is about innovation. That's the reason you see, with 3,000 paintings, people ask me a simple question. You just paint spiritual work because I live that life. I love pizzas, so don't get me wrong. I don't sleep on a floor. I didn't come walking from London or in a boat. I flew a jet. So please understand, there are parameters as a young mind when you look what is important is not how I'm dressed or what I'm wearing or which is the designer who gave me these clothes. It's about what I'm really saying through an art and what are you learning. You know, generally when you go to a school, they say, participation karna bohat important hai. Winning ho na ho, not at all. You have to be a winner. There is no second place. Get this very clear, you are competitive. If you are not a winner and you are number two and number three, and if somebody comes and tells you, koi baat nahi, beta, participate to kar liye na, drop that person straight away and get on to find out who is the winner. Rip apart his or her project and learn. Sit down at the feet and say, agar ye banda, ye bandi itne level par pahunch sakti hai, to aisi kya baat hai jo mujh mein nahi hai. You have to be successful and you have to be ambitious and you have to be a winner. As an artist, it is very important because that makes you understand that you have it in you. If you yourself don't feel you're the next Lata, or you, you feel you're the next banker or a scientist or a musician, who else will believe in you? So that comes to a concluding part of my journey as an artist what I painted, why I painted. I could, I could only read one question. I mean, I was so busy. It feels I'm running the country. I'm not. I was just busy looking after my old parents. So I only read that one prominent question. I don't know who composed it, that how was your childhood? It was not perfect. It was beautiful. I have wonderful memories and I'm happy. Now I'm ready for any happy questions or just don't ask me my bank balance. Everything else is fine. 
relax, enjoy. This is a creative part. I'm not going to talk about finance. It's evident that I'm successful, so I'm here. And you have to understand that, that if you are to be heard, you have to have something unique to showcase without excuses and complaints. I'm ready for anything you want to know. Now I would like Samarth to take the lead. Thank you, Anjali. That was a marvelous introduction. So, Shri Udayraji, we are all great admirers of your artwork. And as we have read that at the age of 24, you have heard an inner call and shifted to spiritual art. So, we are curious to know what inspired you to become an artist. Well, that's a very, very sensitive question because I have always looked at my mother uh, as my Adi Guru, Ma, the first Guru that I've had. It's her life that inspired me. It's her work. It's it, she's my inspirational. She's my resident Durga, and uh, it's deeply inspired me. Mother is the key um, to understand and express. And at the age of 24, way back in the 90s, to become an artist, especially when you're educated and you've already done your masters in uh, psychology from Bombay University to leave everything and then just suddenly to paint um, was primarily because of the grit of my mother's uh, belief in me. So she has remained and will remain forever my inspiration. Thank you, sir, for your inspiring insight. Um, I'd like to ask you that if you weren't an artist, what would you have been? Well, you see, um, destiny uh, made me an artist. To be, I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to be a surgeon. Um, I wanted to be a heart surgeon. And I, I really thought I could really, after my 12th standard, you know, get on to learn medicine. And it didn't happen. I, and I just uh, didn't get the admission for medicine. I then took psychology. Then I, wanted, I practiced as a psychologist. And one fine day on a Guru Purnima night, I just woke up and I had this profound urge of painting, drawing. And I just started painting and drawing. And there was absolutely, there was absolutely no connect. It was just that it was, there was something. And uh, it just, I helped it. And I've always said that 99% of my life is the divine grace and 1% only is hard work. But that 1% is 100% hard work. That was quite an interesting backstory uh, into your uh, what, what you would have been if you weren't an artist. Um, so, are there any specific artists or art movements that uh, you look to that influence your work? Yes, um, I was very inspired and uh, very deeply moved with somebody's work, uh, S. H. Raza, who is the one of the founding members of the progressive art movement in India. And um, I still consider him as my art guru, uh, S.H. Raza, who sadly passed away. He's a very big name, uh, very inspiring. When I look at his work, I'm in a state of trance even today. So yes, uh, I'm very happy to acknowledge that uh, uh, S.H. Raza is a constant source of inspiration. His life is inspirational. His work is inspirational. His Charitra is, in, is deeply inspirational to me. Thank you, sir. That's so thoughtful of you. Uh, what role do you think art plays in our society? And how do you think it can be used as a tool for social change or activism? Well, that's a, that's a heavy question because uh, honestly speaking, art is not really for everybody. It's something that you need to kind of understand, feel, experience. I mean, it, it is, it is a, it's, a, it's a very heavy question. I mean, does art bring about a social change or is there a... Well, I can only say one thing to you. I mean, I can give you an example that I know. That if Raja Ravi Verma hadn't painted the Lakshmi's and the Saraswati's in a form that he gave, would we have had a Lakshmi sitting on a lotus 
or would we have had a Saraswati? So you, you technically need an artist to bring down that divinity which you can touch, feel and understand. So uh, the artist is an integral part. I mean, if you look today as what is called as Sanskriti and Parampara, it's in the temple literature. It's, it's, it's in a, when you read the Quran, when you read the Bible, when you read the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, what is it? Some artist has written a calligraphy and brought the thoughts. It's an artistic understanding that gives meaning to your life. And that's the only thing that is remaining. So, so answering that question is, yes, there is, I mean, without art, writers, painters, dancers, poets, musicians, what would you be left with? There would be no society, there would be no civilization, no? Wow, that was such an enlightening answer. Would you like to share us how you stay motivated and inspired throughout your painting series? Where, where do you find such amazing questions? I hope the media learnt it from you. These are sensitive and emotional and very profound questions. What keeps me motivated? I think um, I, think I have realized that uh, painting is a gift. It's a gift from the divine. It's been, there are several hundreds of good painters all over the world, but you know, how many of them really are blessed with name, fame, glory, very few. And I, I take that responsibility very seriously. It, every day morning it makes me realize and understand that if this is a gift given to me by the divine, I need to really, in my lifetime, preserve it, present it, share it. That really motivates me every, every day. Beautiful words, sir. Have you ever faced any challenges as an artist and how did you overcome them? I'm still facing challenges as an artist and I'm still trying to overcome them. There is no easy solution. There are challenges all the time. There are challenges all the time and they are mostly within. Of course, there's a lot of pressure from a lot of sectors of life, but the challenges are within. And if you have deep spiritual roots, you do overcome them. I mean, you do find ways and solutions and you find a way across and uh, you, do, you do meditate and reflect on your life. I mean, you're very young, but you do think as thinkers, as philosophers, you do spend a little time with yourself. Hard, because even I find it difficult to get away from social media because I never had it. I was deprived of it when I was your age. But you do really find that one quiet, peaceful moment when you're by yourself and you understand where exactly is the problem and how you can resolve it and understand it and feel it and express it. It's an ongoing battle. That's very rightly said, sir. As we're sitting here and we are looking at your artworks, we would like to ask you this question that all your art pieces uh, are revolving around the sun. Is there some significance of sun in your art pieces? Well, well, light. Uh, what you really mean is light. I, I just kind of finished a series of sun which was shown at the Bihar Museum. Uh, light has been the, the focus, uh, light has always remained the focus and your, your observation is absolutely correct. Every work has some radiance of a light. The significance is because I see it all the time. I see, a, when I look at you, I see a different you, I see a light, I see, I something, I see something very beautiful and unique when I look at something, your voice, your sound, I, I see light. In human beings, I see light. I see, I see it all the time. Abhi dekhe, jo aap hain, wahi le aayenge na. Aam ka jhaad hai, kele kahan se le aayega? Badam ka jhaad hai, aapke liye cherry kahan se le aayega? So, your nature is important to understand your very nature. My nature is that of light. I mean, I, I feel it, I experience it, I see it, it matters to me. 
So if somebody says you need to change, I mean run away from such people who are asking you to change because your example should be what I gave you by saying to that person, Oh, I'm going to take a cherry from the tree. I mean, it's my nature to be a mango tree. Oh, where on earth am I going to get you apple? If you need apple, go somewhere else. I'm not going to change my nature. I'm going to evolve. Achhe aam aa sakte hai na? The word change is a very vulgar word which is thrown at a generation like yours. Change kar ye room ko thik rakhe, kitna time phone, please change your habits. You're a girl, you don't know how to cook. Kya karegi to change ho ja, thoda hi nahi, kya kale kapde pen ke gumri. Change is not what they're saying, that evolve, enrich. Bring that thing because you have time on your side and you have circumstances. So it's my nature to see and experience light. How, how else can I express it? Because I find difficult to express it in words, I paint. Wow, that seems very interesting. So do you have any specific mediums or techniques that are unique to your artwork? And could you walk us through your creative process behind your masterpieces? Um, yes, I have only painted oil painting on canvas. I mean, in the past 3000 paintings in the last 35 years of my life, I've only painted oil painting on canvases. That's been my medium. And the process is simple. I, 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 I have a head bath. I wear clothes, simple clothes, white, and I sit and I meditate uh, in looking in front of uh, a blank canvas, and I look at it, and by the time I re-look at it, few hours, few weeks, few months have passed and the painting is ready. There is something that takes over the artist. So when you listen to a favorite musician, I don't know whether you listen to classical music or not, or maybe you're just listening to Arijit, or maybe you're listening to, I don't even know who are the younger ones. You do feel at some particular point that person is not singing only because it is touching your feelings. In three minutes, somebody is singing in front of you and is conveying you those emotions He's a bit, he's not really singing. I'm not really painting. I am only offering myself to the divine and by the time I look. So if you look, I do not have the technicalities of the work, which is now in being imposed on a generation. I flow. That part has to come in all forms of your word. You study, you do your best. If you've been sincere, you'll be able to answer things sincerely in life. There is no compromise there. I mean, there is no phone next to me. There, is, there are no social demands. I have disconnected from the outer world. That's the answering the process. And I have offered myself 100% to what needs to be expressed. Vaha compromise nahi hai. Vaha, I'm going to give only one hour. Aisa nahi hai. You will reach that luxury of time. Of course, you're young, you have a lot more things to do. You will leave. It is called the luxury of time. I have that. My time is my own. I mean, other than looking after my parents, I don't do anything in my life. So that's the process. Try it. It's wonderful. It's interesting. And you'll see how many people harass you. How many people call you? How many people in the house itself will say, Kya chal raha hai tumhara? Bhoot sawar hai kisi buddhe ko sun ke aai hai, kaam karne lag ya. Start studying. You must understand the process of time, the process of allowing yourself is not an instant coffee. It will not happen like this. You haven't become this beautiful in 16 days. It took you 16 years. No? There is a process and you should allow it to unfold or else how would you know? You would never know it. No? Yes, yeah, sir. Thank you, sir. That was a really amazing answer. So, how do you incorporate Indian cultures and traditions into your artworks? I don't really have to put in an effort. I am Indian. My jade is 
I, I see if I, if I have painted Sufism, so I've gone to the masjids and the dargahs. I have painted Jainism, so I've gone to the derasars and prayed and pray. I've painted the whole Persian, Parsi, Avas book. I've painted the prayers, I've painted Ganesha's, I've gone to Siddhu Ganaika. I'm surrounded with it. I'm the fish in the water that is never thirsty. Wow, sir. That's a marvelous blend of tradition and culture into artworks and masterpieces. But we would like to know that, have you ever collaborated with some professionals or artists in different fields? If you have, what did it influence in your work? This is a Raz ki baat hai, huh? <laughs> And I feel kind of shy to say this on record, but I know you, I trust you guys. I have not collaborated. I cannot collaborate with other artists. I cannot do a group show. I just cannot, um, I just cannot, I cannot fit in. Maybe that's, that's the reason in the last 35 years, I've only painted spiritualism. I have not painted any horses or backless actresses. I've been sincere to what I think. I, I mean, I've never collaborated or had group shows. I haven't done it. So I don't have any experience of any such thing. I mean, you're individual, you're unique. Why do you need to have so many likes? Why do you need to have so many approvals? Why do you need you must have good friends, you must have companions, you must have, but do I really need, uh, I am, main wo hun, I know who I am. And as an artist, uh, I feel, as a spiritual mystic, I feel, this is my life. Thank you, sir. Um, how do you find a balance between staying true to yourself as an artist as well as adapting to changes in the art world? A, to just clarify the, the parties, I don't consider myself as an artist. I'm a spiritual, I'm on a spiritual pathway. Painting happens to be my medium of expression. I'm not really, I'm not really in the realms of being called as artist and art trends and like it's to say, oh, Mirabai was a poetess. No, she was not a poetess, please. She was a devotee of Sri Krishna and she happened to write and that's what Mirabai is and so is Kabir. So these are, these are mystics, these are, these are spiritual souls that are seeking moksha and they happen to paint and they happen to write and they happen to sing. They, they don't look at that as their profession. Simple answers. <laughs> Thank you, sir, for that inspiring talk. So now, can you tell me um, a memorable moment or an achievement from your career as an artist? There are so many. I mean, every day when my mother looks at me and she looks at my paintings and she says, wow. Every day my, when my father looks at it and he says, what a beautiful exhibition. And they've been for most of my exhibitions. I feel that's a great memory. Uh, that's the most memorable moment. Of course, I've received so many awards, recognitions. Uh, the most memorable is, is like when, you, when you're very near and dear ones, people who understand you, who have seen your art, you can see it in their eyes. You don't have to capture it in the words. I mean, you can look in their eyes and they know where you have, where you have come, how you've come. It's, it's the admiration in their eyes and that, that's memorable. To me. Uh, thank you. Uh, those certainly must have been some fam fun memories. Um, are there any particular places or environments that inspire your works? Yes, I I I, I like pin drop silence, meditative places. Uh, a, there, there is no there is no space or place outside. I'm talking about the landscape inside. I mean, I can sit in the middle of. Uh, a temple or a masjid or I can just sit, I can sit in the middle of, no, I can sit in the middle of 
anywhere. And if I find that silence and space within, I'm connected. So I've painted in the aircraft, I've painted 30,000 square feet above the ground. I've, I mean, it, when it happens, it just happens and it all unfolds. So you don't really have to... Yes, of course, I, I have a studio which is neat, clean and, you know, uh, which, is, which is up to my vision of divinity. So, but I'm talking about references within because you could be in a crowded place and feel lonely. You could be lonely in a crowded place and vice versa. Indeed, we have seen they have inspired your work. How important is experimentation and pushing boundaries in your art practice? Uh, well, it is very important because you see, I'm. See, the, this question is basically uh, from a point of view that whose boundaries, which boundaries, has divine and divinity have any boundaries? Where is the question of experimentation? I've never experimented. I have one life. I'm almost heading to 60. Where is the time? Ek zindagi, ek laksh, ek dhyan, ek tap. I don't have the luxury of thinking, oh, you know what, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to experiment. I don't have that kind of luxury of, of, of kind of getting into a realm of doing things and then playing around with him. I, I don't. I mean, this is a gift I have and that's all that I have and that's all I share. Those were truly words of wisdom. Kindly brief us on the importance of storytelling in your artwork. Well, that's an amazing question, huh? That is a very amazing question. Yes, storytelling is very important. Um, a narrative is important. If I want to tell you uh, that you should not cheat, you should not, uh, you know, you should not be selfish, you should be, I need, I need a story to communicate that. Durga Saptashati is a story that the rishis are communicating to you by saying, you know, be careful of the pride, be careful of the Mahisasur which is within, which can demolish your entire life. And that narrative is something that has been always there. Uh, that's a beautiful question. That has been always there in my work and it will always remain because I need to express uh, myself and, and communicate in a form of a story. Like you see, most of the people say there are so many works here that we are overwhelmed. Yes, you are supposed to be overwhelmed. You're supposed to be there. You've gone to the gym. You're supposed to sweat it out there, you know. I mean, you can't complain sitting in an air-conditioned room, ki thand lag rahi hai. You, you, you are supposed to, divinity is supposed to overwhelm you in any form and format. You look at a beautiful tree and you're like, you look at a sunset and you're like, wow, why do you close your eyes? Because you want to take in that experience within, right? Beautiful answer, sir. What, challenge do you, what challenges do you see contemporary artists facing today, especially in India? Well, that's, the, that's, that's coming from somebody with a good sense of commerce. There's tremendous challenges. So money is the key. Success is the key. And there is a lot of pressure, including all of you, to be successful. And how do you measure success? By money. No? I mean, you're, how many people are going to walk up to you from your own family and say, oh, you're so successful. You haven't passed your exams. And what are they talking about? You're so successful because you're so well-mannered, so well-behaved. Your personality is... So, no. You're measured in a society based on who you are, which car do you drive, what clothes do you wear, which school do you go to, which school you want to go to at the university, what shoes, mobiles, your, your, your entire persona is constantly viewed by your friends and family with the success. Our son came first. Oh, our son is playing football, he's going to play football. Why are you measured in it? Because you're living in a society and there's nothing wrong in it. and you're measured through the dynamics. So artists are facing this battle. And that's where I said, if you have a spiritual base, if your principles and values are sound, 
success will not blow you off. That's the reason you see pop singers, rock stars, great artists are wiped off with drugs, alcohol and all that follows with money. If you are in that position of remaining grounded, then no amount of success will challenge you or demolish you or fill you off with pride. There are challenges. I accept and agree and understand that question well. That's very rightly said, sir. As students, even we face a lot of challenges. My next question to you is, is there any role of technology in your artistic practice? No. I'm not into AI-generated images, installations. No. I'm very, very, very old. I just look about getting to 60, but I, I, I feel I'm 600 years old. I'm still, I'm so back and so ancient, I mean, you could put me in a glass box and call me a dinosaur of the spiritual art world. I'm so far away. I mean, of course, I have an iPhone, don't get me wrong. And, and I love pizzas. And I mean, don't, get, don't get me wrong on that. But internally, I just feel I'm so ancient. So technology, I use all the technology. I have a, I have a laptop. and I mean, I mean, I enjoy all the technology. I mean, just I, I just love it. But I don't, I, it has not reached the core centorium, the core garbhasthanaha, where the purity of that thought remains. Because as I said, it's a gift. I value it and I cherish it and it's enriched my life. That was beautiful, sir. So we are all awestruck by your wonderful display here. So can you share some experiences of how your art has impacted your viewers? But there are many stories. There's a documentary being made on my life. One part is released with the BBC and then one with the CNN. Is how the viewers view it. People have gone in a state of trance. People have collapsed. People have joy with joyous tears. People have cried. People have gone out of control. People have seen things. Many people, many devotees get emotional and they see things and uh, they admire things. They understand it and they have overwhelming experiences. I mean, wherever I've taken my shows, I've had people say things that they see something here, they see, and I also go and see, because you see, when I paint, I'm at a divine level, seeking the blessings. So, there are audiences which have different kind of experiences. People stand in front of a, a work of art and just don't say anything. They're speechless. Thank you for the great answer, sir. So we are more than excited to know about any upcoming projects or exhibitions that are going to happen. So could you please enlighten us about them? I do have exhibitions every year, uh, all over. It's just that last five years I haven't had an exhibition in India. My forthcoming show is, uh, is on Zodiac, about uh, what's really what's really that cosmic understanding and it reflects uh, what is the zodiac unfolding. Uh, thank you for that answer. So you received your name uh, Sadak Shivananda Saraswati yes. during your 14 year uh, sp yes. uh, spiritual, uh, during your 14 year period as a spiritual seeker. Yes. Uh, what were some of the key insights and learnings that uh, during the time that you would uh, in the 14 years? What, how do they still uh, continue to shape your life and your art today? Beautiful question. Thank you for asking. Well, half of the people have forgotten that I lived as a, a Sadak Shivanan Saraswati for 14 years. It was a beautiful moment. I was a Sadak. I was not a Swami or a Sanyasi. I was a Sadak. Sadak means somebody who is pursuing knowledge. And I learned a lot of things. I, I learned uh, to understand Sanskrit. I, I read the Vedas. I was taught the Puranas, Upuranas. I had, a, I had a wonderful 14 years. Uh, it was difficult. Uh, it was uh, ritualistic. I had to wear a particular kind of orange. I couldn't talk to women. I couldn't, I couldn't meet many people. I had a lot of uh, restriction and that restriction gave me the discipline and it brought that discipline into my art. So today, when I have to get into the dynamics and the state of painting, I go back into that state where I don't really need to meet, interact, or understand the outer world, I'm with myself. So yes, it has shaped me, it has given me consistency, 
It's given me a certain sense of perseverance. It's given me determination. It's made me, uh, it's given me the tenacity to sit and paint and meditate for hours. And that's, uh, that's a gift those 14 years gave me. Thank you for asking that question. That was wonderful. It's great to know about this. I will ask you about the spiritual art movement that you found out. What are the core principles of this movement and how are you working to promote and expand it? Well, uh, I formulated a structured school of spiritual art movement in the year 2000, where I opened a Gurukul in Goa. And uh, there were many artists who were doing a lot of work. Uh, and they were being kind of written off as calendar artists. So if you had a Ram with a bow and arrow, or Hanuman with a pooch, or somebody with a mooch, those artists were written off as calendar artists because everybody wanted to see modern. Everybody wanted to see unique. Everybody wanted to see something grand and abstract. Well, that was fine, but there was a large group of, of artists that were struggling to, uh, they, they were struggling to kind of paint what they wanted to. And I said, look, this is a place you can come and paint and I'm here, whatever I can do, I, I promote artists, I take them to London where I live now and offer, see, we are shy as modern India, we are shy to wear our faith on, on our shoulders. I don't see anybody wear a cross or uh, or wear, wear a, a om or I don't see anybody wear any religious thing. Are we shy of our roots? I mean, are we not going to wear an om because, are we not going to wear a cross? Are, are we not going to wear a, a icon of uh, the following of Islam? Are, are we not going to be proud of who we are? My mother is not Rekha. My father is not Amitabh Bachchan. So, am I not proud of my roots? I am hell proud of my mother. She's stunning. My father is brilliant. Aren't you going to go to your roots? Are we shy of talking about our roots? Please think as a younger generation, be a proud Indian, because you are Indians. Uh, and be proud of the religion or any spiritual setup uh, that you feel. I mean, he wants to become a Buddhist, he shaves his head and comes to the... And he's, he's, he, he's, he's not imposing that on anybody by telling him, hello, you need, to, you need to shave and lose some weight. You're starting to look more of a Banaras Pandit. No. You accept and acknowledge, but please understand, your generation is really shy of saying it on the face, ki na, main navratra ko garba to karungi, jaungi, khelungi, par main upas bhi kar rahi hoon. I'm not going to have anything from swingi. I am fasting. I'm Jain. I'm going to do Ambil. Why, why we shy? Why is the generation so shy? I mean, after your questions, I also have questions. So, let's do with what you have to say. It's not that easy meeting an artist. I mean, what do you thought? I had no questions. Ha ha ha. You've taken one hour, at least 20 minutes, so we will take questions. Mein. And I'm not prepared with the questionnaire. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir. Being a master of 64 arts is attributed to the majestic gurus. How do you integrate different art forms beyond painting into your life and practice? See, a guru is a guru is a guru at the end of the day. He is guru in making food, he is guru in singing, he is guru in communication, he is guru, guru in even throwing tantrums. If he tells me now that the battery is low and he wants a reshot, he will get it from me. He is a professional, he is supposed to get his battery charged. I can throw a tantrum in a typical guru manner. So, once you are a guru, you are guru in everything. If she is good in one thing, she has to be good in everything. If he is strict and disciplined in one thing, he is in all. It filters all across the board. And that is something which I am telling the next generation. Do not compromise. If you are good in something, you have to be good in everything. Why not? Oh, no, I am good only in mathematics and I am not good in that. Education is about discipline. It's nothing to do with your achievements. Thank you, sir. Your wise thoughts help us, helps to enlighten us and we are full of inspiration and motivation. But there are some people still around who still need motivation. So, what advice will you give to young aspiring artists? 
टाइम इज़ नॉट अ लग्जरी यू कैन अफोर्ड आपको पढ़ाई करनी पड़ती है यू हैव टू गो टू फैमिली फंक्शन विच आर वेरी बोरिंग हाउ मनी कैन यू गो पेरेंट्स आर एवर डिमांडिंग everybody feels that the son has to turn into a sachin one has to be a salman i understand that i understand that very well to motivate you to become an artist the simple go start seeing art go start seeing art and ask yourself what is in me that is artistic even if i'm going to put flowers or arrange a table it will be so unique it's a journey within raja अगर बाहर से कोई मोटिवेशन का मिल जाता ना तो दस और सचिन खड़े होते उसकी क्रिकेट देखकर मोटिवेशन एंड ऑल एंड डोंट एक्सपेक्ट टीचर्स टू बी दे आर बैटलिंग देयर ओन लाइफ अंदर से उस लाइट को ढूंढ निकालिए व्हाट इज मिसिंग व्हाट इज इट एंड दैट इन आर फोर्स इज गोइंग टू बी अर मोटिवेशन बिकॉज बाहर की मोटिवेशन से अगर आई वो जब जाएगी तो आपकी मोटिवेशन चली गई ऐसा नहीं है नो no? makes a lot of logical scientific way of looking at things thank you sir this brings us to the end of this journey thank you for enlightening us esteemed guests and especially the national and international award winner mr udayraj gandes i extend my heartfelt gratitude for gracing us today with your presence your master talk has been an enlightening journey into the world filled with art and profound insights and inspirations We are truly privileged to have the opportunity to delve into your creative mind and learn from your experiences. Thank you for sharing your valuable time, wisdom and passion with us. Your artistic journey has left an indelible mark on our minds and we are enriched by the knowledge you've imparted. We appreciate your openness in answering all our questions and providing a glimpse into your intricacies of your craft. On behalf of everyone here, we appreciate we really say thank you for coming here and this has been an unforgettable experience may your creativity inspire and resonate with aspiring artists and enthusiasts alike thank you once again thank you very much now the part 2 <laughs> please keep all your papers on the side no preparation each one of you will ask me one question only which is not prepared and rehearsed which comes from your art it can be a beautifully ridiculous question as to who is your designer but it has to be unique after i have asked five questions and i will ask individual questions to individual because individual people ask me individual questions correct so my first question is to you why do you worry so much about how your presentation is going to be it's at school Why do you worry so much about being perfect and perfect hona chahiye why there is so much pressure inside that you feel i need to do this and i need to do it well please answer that question uh, i think i think in my opinion the reason i try to be perfect in everything is uh, probably because of the pressure from my parents because they have gone to a certain level and i am not at that level yet so the pressure from them it's not they're not telling me to do it in this perfect way but it's an it's a non-existent uh, pressure that's on me to uh, be as best as i can and then hopefully catch up to them because when i look at you i feel that pressure is just driving you consistently to a very uncomfortable point parents are very smart they will never say it anything on the on the face you know they're very sweet but they'll communicate what they want to at the right time so you know don't put yourself that what is your good name abhyom don't be so pressurized you know allow yourself you know allow your whole body your whole self to just understand that yes they are playing their role and you have a role to play too a hanuman cannot do the entire ramayan he has his place and role accept that so this should remain this in your heart as a guru mantra for the rest of your life there is no pressure what your parents have achieved or not achieved is not your destiny is that clear yeah. wonderful just in case you thought it was coming to you <laughs> you i last random questions i am not that well prepared you see i am old ancient yes so my question to you is when you see very beautiful things you get very emotional why why are you so emotional i feel i get connected to them and um, it inspires me to become that 
to include that uh, in my life to follow their path and to learn something from that portion or that thing that i am seeing but you can do all that without getting so emotional yeah maybe <laughs> maybe think about it think about it yes i have one question to you no you can't grab the paper oh yeah the mic <laughs> i don't do you really believe that what you think matters to the people around you i know that it doesn't matter but i know that it matters most to me so i try to um work on so that so you are aware that what you think and feel really doesn't matter to people around you yes. you are aware of that yes good good awareness i have a very important question for you why do you keep on recalling incidences in your life that have hurt you gives me motivation so i was right in asking it hurts you and pain motivates you it gives me a rush inside to do better to be better yeah so if you convert that pain into a more positive emotion if you convert the running river water to a damp and create electricity hundreds will get educated with one bulb under a tree so if you if you just evolve and move that pain to pleasure you will understand that energy is same but you slowly moved from pain motivates me to pleasure motivates me aap apne aap se chhoot jayengi what is your good name pratha pratha think about it yeah. and we don't live in the past do we very easily said i just threw a tantrum this morning because somebody didn't do anything last evening my bed was not made i was not living in the past but i was screaming at them in the morning i do understand that i'm human too but convert that negative pain into positive pleasure and see how that inspires you try it once gir jayengi फिर एक बार संभल जाएंगी क्या है पर उसको जकड़ के ना रखे डोंट होल्ड ऑन टू द पेन ट्रिमेंडसली टू द यंग मैन डू यू ऑलवेज फील फोकस इज इम्पोर्टेंट फोकस लाइक फोकस इज इम्पोर्टेंट बिकॉज इफ वी आर डूइंग समथिंग और द अदर थिंग लाइक वी आर ट्राइंग सपोज वी आर टेकिंग एन आर्ट वर्क वी आर ट्राइंग टू कम्प्लीट एन आर्ट वर्क if we are not focused we are getting distracted we might do one or the other mistake in that in that artwork and we might not be able to convey a proper meaning which we want to convey so it is important to focus and avoid the distractions do you handle everything in your life with such focus uh i try i try to handle it but some things are out of our control so we uh, could not focus on it and the things which we can focus i try to focus the most that's so why do you get so angry when you don't achieve what you have what has anger got to do with focus and achievements uh, anger means uh, i get angry on myself that why if others can do it why i am not able to do it it's like itna gussa is umar mein don't laugh madam don't laugh you are like a mast kalandar duniya idhar ki udhar ho main to apna jiyungi what is your good name namya namya Do you really feel you are born free na duniya idhar ki udhar mast hu main isn't that true when you get up and somebody is screaming at you and saying chal main ud chali where do you come up with such happiness of like you know i don't care a damn like uh, i don't really get that hurt if someone says something bad about me like let's then, say if it's my family uh -huh. then um yeah i will feel little hurt but then i'm like yeah it's okay i made a mistake so theek hai chalega i'll i'll try not to do it later or if someone says something bad about me let's say it's one of my friends or someone i don't like then i'm like theek hai fine jaane do who cares about it because if i am just going to keep holding it in my life then i'm not going to go anywhere that's that's a good approach but you know thodi responsibility honi chahiye na yeah i do that like 
if I'm giving my opinion, my mom says I'm very responsible, <laughs> especially in the house, my br sure. younger brother and everything. So you, you have that, you know, you have, you have that quality at, at a... I would like to ask something to you. Do, you. do you, do you really feel you're running the universe and you can control everything? So then why do you really want to control everything? Why do you feel that maybe I could control this a bit, I could do things better? Because I have seen, like I've had like, for example, my mother has been very inspiring and she's been like really successful. So she has unleashed her full potential and I don't want to be mediocre. I also want to unleash my full potential. So I don't want to control external things, but I want to control and, you know, live life to my full potential. But you do feel that sometimes it would be better if you could control things, no? And they went your way. It would happen so systematically, so properly. Yeah. The experiences Correct. that we're getting now, Correct. like the dif the different uh, situations that are created because it's not systematically, like we get a lot of inputs and that's how time and experience kind of plays, goes hand in hand. As you see, each of you have your own learning experiences of control, of pressure, of, of things that are carefree and they are interwoven and interlinked and interconnected. There are characters within each that are there to unfold and learn. Do you feel that you have some artistic talent in you? That's a very interesting question coming from a very raw perspective. I was not prepared for this. Yes, I do feel I have a very artistic and creative view on, uh, like on the world. Being an artist myself, I practiced art like I was doing it day and night, all day, 24 hours in the lockdown. My mother is also an artist, so I, I gained some inspiration from her. I learned from her and I created my own art and it flowed. It just flowed freely and I was just painting and painting and painting. And it was just a, it's some of the best days of my life, actually. So why don't you pursue it? Uh, I mean, just leave the school, sit at home and paint. How disastrous it even sounds to the teacher behind. <laughs> Have you ever had these, you know, had this bindas thought ki nahi mein na abhi painti karungi, abhi ghari ja mein jaungi nahi kala school. Someday, yes, I did, I did have that thought, but uh, I'm going to pursue interior designing, okay. which is very close to that yes. field. So it would somehow be cooperated in that. Uh, in that. But you do feel then, no? Some, like, sometimes I do, I should be an artist and it should just be there, like yeah, I should just, just do go. It. Yeah, you do feel, you do, you do feel, uh, you do feel that, that format and thoughts and, what is your good name? Archisha. Archisha. Do you worry about the things you lost in your life? Yeah, it's like. I don't want to know what you've lost because I know what they are. But do you also know that when a cocoon is going to lose its outer covering, it's going to become a butterfly? Every loss is only a gateway to bring forth another new beginning. So don't hold on. What do you want to become in life? That is something I'm actually struggling with right now. So don't become anything, na? Sanyasi lelo. Universe is run. Do you, do you think Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook is running? The universe is running on its own. Karna kya zaruri hai? Main hu bas, I am that. Itna kya pressure hai ki I don't know what I am to do. Why do you have to do anything? There is nothing to be done. In case if you all think that there is something to be done and you can do it, you are you're going to miss the bus. It is happening. I am only enriching and communicating. So don't be under any pressure. What is gone is gone. It's never going to come back. New. New. So don't worry about it. And if you're struggling, keep struggling. I also don't know what I want to do. I just paint. If I knew what I wanted to do, I would be under a tree getting moksha and get nirvana and gone. What were I sitting here? So no such understanding and please don't expect anybody to understand when they ask you this what do you want to become i have not asked this question to anybody i just asked you because i knew you so everybody is sorted mary is in the game 
I'm now going to drop everything and I'm just going to travel the world. That's the most amazing thing you want to do. Last but not the least, your good name? Anjali. Anjali, what's happening in your life? Well, I feel now I'm sort of happy in my life because there are a few things that, you know, those goals that I had from my school time that all I wanted to achieve, I'm achieving it, so. You're at peace. Yes. You're like, you know, my ne next Mira by brand is mine. I mean, I'm sitting there, I've reached and I say, you're very peaceful, you're like chilled out. You're like, yeah, I've got everything what I want. Yeah. The importance of understanding each other's feelings and thought, which is non-scripted, is to value each other. You all in 10 years would be all over the world, would never keep in touch or struggle to keep in touch and call each other only for their marriage, for Sangeet and Mehendi, hopefully in Italy. The idea is journeys are important not the destination. Now shoot non-scripted questions randomly at me and I'll give you one-line answers. Yes? Uh, sir, so what um, gave you that idea to put your spirituality in a painting? Like that. I'll answer an honest question here that uh, nothing gave me an idea. There was a force that decided I just followed. There was no decision. I don't exist. All that exists is, I paint because it is the wish of the divine. Um, okay, this is something that you did kind of mention before. Why do you go for the clothing that you wear and not just a simple pair of t-shirt and a pair of jeans? Well, I look stunning in this. I look beautiful, I look wise and wealthy and I mean, I'm just happy. It makes me comfortable. I enjoy the way I dress and hopefully, I'm not an eye candy, but still, I mean, I think I'm kind of good presentable. I take, put in the effort. People have come to see me. They need to notice. I need to give them. You know, a lot of time, if I go to somebody's house and says, Oh my God, I don't have time for my house. I don't have time for my house. I walk away. Didn't you have that kind of time and keep everything ready before I came? I mean, is this that so casual? I don't treat, I don't treat any one of you or any setup casually by saying, Are bachche hi aare hai, jayenge aise. No, if I'm going to give an interview to the BBC or the Times of India or talk to you, I will give that perfect best of mine. There are no compromise in this. Thank you. Please, yes? Um, reason why you use oil paints in on your canvases, not like acrylic or any other medium? That's the first thing that came in my hand way back in 1990 and that's what stayed with me. So, sir, so if you had an option, would you like want to scale into acrylic or any other medium? Like if you had more time and like leisure? No, I don't because I, you see, I'm, I'm born with it. I don't have, I mean, I'm a, I'm a mango tree, I don't have an option to get some bananas if I had the time. I mean, I don't have an option to change my parents. I mean, I don't have an option to change the color of my eyes, option of... My gun is that, my nature is just like your life's ka apna structure. Hai. No, life, life with options and choices and all these are very new words. You know, when you reach my age, you'll hear, you know, when you become a grandmother, you'll say, yeah, yeah. I had gone to listen to this old man in those days and he said, option wali baati nahi hai. This generation of yours has these options. What is option? Lata Mangeshkar had no option. She had to sing and she sang. Bhim Sen Zoshi had no option. There are no options and choices and career choices. These are all very fancy things. But a good question. Yes. So I was very intrigued when you talked about the third eye, the power of the subconscious. Yeah. Can you please elaborate on that? Well, you have to experience this. You know, gulab jamun, jab aap khati hai, to mithas aap ke zaban par hai. I can't eat a gulab jamun and tell you, kitna mitha hai na, aapko bhook lagi hai khana, aapko khana hai. I can't answer all questions because those are experiences only you can have, no? Spirituality are not influenced by the modern world, modern life. But see, this is this is a critical question at a very young age as to uh, be involved in everything. Na, Mira bhi to Rajputon ke paas thi na, uska ekko mana hoye dujo nahi. You had one heart and you gave it to Sri Krishna. 
be involved in everything. Go to all the parties, try everything in life. Wear the smallest clothes you can ever find, scandalize your parents, shock people. Do everything, but just be aware, aapka man kaha hai? Where is your heart? I mean, where is your heart? I mean, who's, who's the ruler of your heart? Kartik, Ranveer, Ranveer, big chuke hai. They have become old bananas now. Aap apni dil ki baat sunne. Ki aapka man kaha ram raha hai? What is it that you want to do? That is the pathway. I can only give you a road map. Chalna to aap hi ko hai. No? Yes? So you talk about spiritualism and that. So I'd like to ask like as we students, how can we uh, like integrate those values in our life? Basically, stop, you see, look, chanting, hai, namasmaran, hai, mandir jana, ye sab to bahar ki cheez hai. Can you sit quiet for just five minutes and do nothing? That's it. Without learning ABCD, there is no question of communication. Oxford to bholi jaiye. Without grammar, there is nothing. So please don't be under any wrong concepts, conceptions of mind and thoughts ki. Aisa kuch nahi hai. Can you start by sitting simply alone in your room doing nothing, looking at the ceiling? When you go and see, when, you, when, you're, when, you're, when you're sitting by the river or the sea or by the... You're just there. Can you spend five minutes with yourself? That's the key. Vahaan se raste chalte chalte chalte, you will, you will find the way. You will find the way. There is no other way out. Yes, yes. Yes. Sir, uh, what according to you is the real meaning of discipline and how can I as a person cultivate that discipline? What would you think? Beautiful. Discipline is something that you are comfortable with. So if you feel and you can talk to yourself by saying, Nahi, aaj mujhe ye karna nahi hai. Main aaj kahi nahi jaungi. Aaj mein din bhar yuh hi padhi rahungi. And then suddenly you have a call from Hrithik. Chal rahi kya? Fighter lag rahi hai. Ritika personal phone mein jau maa, fighter dekhne mein zaru jau ngi. If aap apne aap se ek baar baat karke us sayyam mein le a sakti hai, if you can bring yourself to say, I decided that in the morning, I don't care a damn if Ritika wants to take me on a date to see fighter, he loves young girls, I don't care a damn, I'm not moving. Yes, meinne apne aap se sankalp kar liya hai. Dunya idhar ki udhar ho. If you can battle your own temptations of the self, you have found the key. You have found the key to success within. Then you can be able to be able to get from because you have found your own way. And you have to pay the price and consequences for that. And why not? It is only you. Thank you, sir. Well, yes. I wanted to know what kind of emotional levels you go through while you're developing your paintings. Tremendous. As you can see, uh, in none of your talks, you had somebody question you so point blank and internal. So I'm a very emotional person. I'll remember each one of you, even 25 years down the line, if I see you at the airport, and I will remind you of what answer you have given me. So I'm extremely emotional about what I say and do, I'm passionate about it. I am. Yes. I wanted to ask you about the significance of surrounding in your life. As you mentioned earlier that you like to paint before, like before painting you meditate. Yes. So if you are visiting a place, for example, if you are at, at a temple, do you feel like sitting there and just painting whatever is going around you or the energy that you feel? Sometimes I do. Oh, my last exam, I went to Eiffel Tower in Paris and I wanted to paint a Ganpati there. And half of my friends and family were so scandalized. I said, oh, when my Ganpati Siddhi Vinayak will come and look at Eiffel Tower, let me paint him here. So I took out my notebook, said, I started painting him there. Surroundings matter, surroundings don't matter. There are dynamics to it. I may suddenly see a beautiful waterfall, I could go to Scotland and I would start, uh, start chanting Om Namah Shiva because I thought, oh my God, we must have a beautiful Shiva temple in Scotland, in that cold, and offer him a single malt whiskey. The dynamics are about how close you feel with that person, that situation, with who you are, how connected you feel with. So surroundings matter and they don't. 
यू हैवन आस मी एनी क्वेश्चन मस्त कलंदर कुछ तो पूछिए everybody has asked everybody has asked questions now yes yes i just wanted to know whether you here with us or you're thinking and you've floated away in thoughts which you do in classrooms you're very much here thank you so great um, uh, no more questions anybody wants to know how that we how how oh, yeah, you want to ask a question uh, so uh, that uh i heard that uh, people say that we have come in this world for some kind of purpose or some kind of goal yes so how do we identify that purpose or that goal you can't you can't dhoondne se agar koi cheez mil jati to kab ki hasil ho sakti hai offer yourself make your life a beautiful garden birds and bees will come bulana nahi padega you will never know what your purpose is if you offer yourself by saying i'm ready and that is your calling all this fancy management talk bhul jaiye they are they are all fancy management books power of now power of then power of who ab ye sab bhul jaiye you come in an artist darbar bhul nobody success can give you the key it is your journey आपको भूख लगी है ना मैं नहीं खा सकता हूं आपको प्यास लगी हम आपको पानी दे सकते हैं प्यास तो आप ही को बुझानी है यू हैव टू फाइंड योर ओन कॉलिंग इफ यू ऑफर योर सेल्फ नो इफ यू ऑफर योर सेल्फ टू बाई समी चल आई एम क्ले मोल्ड मी अब कुत्ता बनाए बिल्ली बनाए पक्षी बनाए पुरुष बनाए स्त्री बनाए आर यू ऑफरिंग योर सेल्फ एज स्टूडेंट आर यू ऑफरिंग योर सेल्फ टू विजडम ऑल वॉट यू आर डूइंग is studying and getting marks other than that what what is your achievement another question is and which should remain in the rest of your life in your mind is please don't go to people who have achieved something in their life and ask questions aapko koi adhikar nahi hai question karne ka you are in no position to question me but you are in a position to ask may i please ask मैं आई सीक नॉलेज फ्रॉम यू उस ह्यूमिलिटी को कभी ना भूले यू आर नॉट इन अ पोजिशन टू क्वेश्चन एनी थिंग और एनी बॉडी बिकॉज यू हैव नॉट क्वेश्चन योर सेल्फ तो आप हमें क्या प्रश्न पूछ रही हैं जो आपकी अपनी जिंदगी सवालों में बंद गई है प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड दैट एंड आई वॉन्ट टू से दिस लास्ट बिकॉज यू मस्ट अंडरस्टैंड योर ओन पर्सनल जर्नी you are not in a position to question anybody in master talk you go to a master right so you say we seek your understanding on this matter the word question itself is vulgar aapka koi haq nahi banta ki aap kisi ko kisi cheez se sawal kare apne parents ko bina sawal kare hello you didn't exist if they didn't so you ask योर मान बाबा कि ये हम जानना चाहते हैं ये हमारे प्रश्न नहीं है इफ दैट ह्यूमिलिटी कम्स यू विल अचीव ट्रिमेंडसली बिकॉज यू वुड सीक एंड अंडरस्टैंड नॉलेज राइट यू वुड स्टॉप लर्निंग ऑल दिस स्टडिंग लर्निंग बंद करिए स्टार्ट नोइंग स्टार्ट फीलिंग तभी तो आर्टिस्ट बनेंगे अगर किसी को आर्टिस्ट बनना है अदरवाइज यू विन ऑफ मैनेजमेंट बुक्स यू कैन एवरीबडी यू कैन मेक अ लॉट ऑफ मनी डूइंग मेनी अदर थिंग्स नो सो नेक्स्ट टाइम वेन यू गो टू अ मास्टर योर अप्रोच विल चेंज एंड यू विल रिमेंबर ट्वेन ईयर्स डाउन द लाइन ट्वेंटी ईयर्स डाउन द लाइन वेन आई विल सी यू एट एन एयरपोर्ट लाउंज आई विल वॉक अप टू यू एंड आई विल आस्क फॉर समथिंग दैट यू हैड सेट टू मी वे बैक हैप्पी लेट्स टेक अ ग्रुप पिक्चर कम Yes. G. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Rajiv. Have a round of applause for you. Yes, the teachers, the team, the team who work so hard. They, they are your teachers. They look like your friends. If you had looked at our teachers, you would be like this. They look like your friends. So kind. Hello.
we just thank the teachers. Oh, all four are teachers? Oh, how lovely. They hardly look teachers. Teachers come like this now. Beautiful and young. Oof. Hamari zamane mein teachers hua karti thi na. Grey, old, poji, or haath mein cane. I had a mathematics teacher. She had a cane in her hand. I was so scared of her that I hated maths for the rest of my life. She was called Mrs. Menon. She would come only. That's a maths teacher? Good Lord! If you have a maths teacher like that, everybody would want to learn algebra and geometry. You're so lucky that teachers come in such a beautiful format now. They are kind. You, teachers are not allowed to give do tramate now, na? Late chal aai hai, late. Chal kal muhi. Bend. So there's no cane. Oh, there's no cane. Hey, Ram, I would like to know what happens in the school. So teachers have to tell politely the child. If, if, if a teacher loses it, after explaining something three, four times, you can't throw a duster? <gasps> no? My God, I, I mean, I've been a bad master school today. I've given people real... See, honesty, what you want, you can put two things in it. सुदबुद हिलाने के लिए ना कि एक बार अगर आप कोई चीज समझ समझ नहीं रहे हैं आपको दो तीन बार समझा दें यू नॉट पेइंग अटेंशन आई एम नॉट आई एम नॉट प्रोपोगेटिंग दैट चिल्ड्रन शुड बी बट एक एक ड्यूरेस एक रिस्पेक्ट होना चाहिए प्लीज नेवर फॉरगेट दैट योर पेरेंट्स आर नेवर योर फ्रेंड्स योर टीचर्स आर नेवर योर फ्रेंड्स दे आर अहेड ऑफ टाइम दैट्स द रीजन दे आर योर टीचर्स ये बात कभी ना भूलें सो आई मीन टीचर्स हैव डन वंडरफुली आई एम उदय राज गार्डनर्स and I would like to take a moment and thank the Kanakya International School for having taken the initiative to bring young minds together to seek knowledge, to seek wisdom and the tremendous effort that went in by the teachers to bring them to an art gallery to see my painting exhibition on Durga Saptashati at the Nehru Center Art Gallery. I'm very grateful. I'm very, very happy that the entire Kanakya family has the vision to bring forth art and culture to its schools. Thank you very much. Very inspirational and thoughtful. Very wise and spiritual. An enlightening conversation. Highly amazing and inspiring. We get to learn a lot today. Understood a lot about experiences and uh, ourselves. It was a really deep conversation and it was a divine experience. The aura was divine. Beautiful eye-opening experience. It was unique and different.